Hey guys, Mood JK here. Just wanted to um, have a little discussion, I guess, about uh, various things and also uh, run through the event a couple times, just kind of in the background, not really the featured part of the, the video. Um, so, <clears throat> in the last video that I made, it was basically me pulling on the new banner, and, you know, I admitted that I was a little upset um, because the rates were vastly, vastly different from what we had come to expect. Now, um... It is true that I did end up getting Zidane on both accounts. It took me about 30 pulls to get one on my main account, and then it took me about 11 on my second account, which was lucky. Uh, if you consider the actual rates that people are pulling him, even my 30 pulls for one Zidane was lucky. That's like a 3.33% pull rate or something like that, whereas the actual pull rate is closer to 2%. Now, my whole beef was not the fact that I was so unlucky compared to the actual rates. I realize now that I actually was lucky. But my problem was that the rates were so bad, uh, especially from what we had um, come to see in the past. In previous banners, and <clears throat> I don't know if everybody knows this by now, I think I've mentioned it already, but any unit that has a that's a base three star unit, even if it goes to five stars, like a Lena, Tella, Golbez, you know, whatever. All those base three star units used to have a pull rate of 12%, about 12%. The ones that were base four star units, kind of like the prize of the banner, um, they, the lowest they go is four, four stars, so you have to hope for a yellow crystal or above. Those units, like Warrior of Light, Chizuru, those were reported at about 2%. Now, I had no problem with this whatsoever because, you know, I've played other gacha games before. I play, play one currently. I play uh, Final Fantasy Record Keeper. You know, a lot of those are 2% pull rates, 1% uh, for the, um, you know, BSB level stuff. That's fine. My problem was that um, even the base 3-star units for this new banner which, by the way, weren't even like long-term elite prizes. Were all now instead of twelve percent, they were now two percent. So Kuja, Amaranth, and um, Zidane, of course. And that to me was like really surprising because it came out of nowhere. It was it totally bucked what we had come to expect. Now you can argue that you know they don't have to do what we expect. They they can change things if they want. That's true. But changing from 12% to 2% is a drastic change, no matter you know, where you come from, where, where you, how, no matter how you slice it, basically. That's a big, big change. And the, thing that, the reason why it's so disturbing is because Gumi has a history of doing this kind of stuff. I don't know how many of you have played Brave Frontier, which is kind of like the game that this is designed around, you know, to be honest. Uh, that game has been out for years now. Um, people have played that game including myself, although I did, I, I'll admit I didn't play very early in the game. I kind of played when things were a little bit better, honestly, but from what I hear, from the stories I've read, they did this kind of stuff where, you know, they would make it seem like they're being generous, they would give all this stuff, and then suddenly these banners would come out, they would hype up these units, and it would turn out that there was no rate up at all. Or they would rate up certain other units that were not the top prizes, and they would word it as if everything had a rate up, and then later on, it's like, oh, you know, read the fine print. Those units are not rated up. These are. So it was like kind of tricky stuff. And then when people would get upset about it, the customer service would basically be like, you know, too bad. You didn't read it carefully enough or, you know, we don't have to show you everything. And um, and at some point in, in their other games, like there was something called Chain Chronicles, I think. There was actually some kind of featured prize that had a 0% drop rate. It literally never could drop for anybody. It was obviously a bug or a glitch. I'm gonna assume that it wasn't some intentional deception on their part. But was there any compensation for that? No. And that's why that game is dead right now. Brave Frontier is actually still alive and kicking and I, last I checked, I think yesterday, it, it was actually in the top uh, 60 on the iTunes um, app store like the grossing ranking which is pretty impressive I mean they must be having some crazy deals these days and I for, by all accounts their deals are good now 
but um, the reason I'm talking about all this stuff is that I was a little bit naive, I think. I thought that, um, you know, because this is like a joint, you know, effort between Square Enix and Gumi and um, I don't know what that other company is, Alim. I don't know what that they do really. But, you know, I thought that there would be a little bit of like um, making sure that things were fair this time. And, and to be fair, for the most part, this game has been pretty fair, in my opinion, although the grinding is pretty insane. But the reason this upsets me or worries me is I don't want it to be a sign of things to come. I don't want it to go down the route of, all right, now that we've hooked these people, we're going to start you know, screwing them over. We're going to start ripping them off. And then when people get sufficiently angry with them, that's when they start turning around and you know being fair again. I mean, I, I just don't like that. And again, to be objective about this, I know they're in it to make money, that's fine. But, I mean, I, as a person who has common sense, as a person who's good at math, whatever, I feel like their calculations are just very off in this game. Like, what people are willing to pay, what people are willing to put up with as far as grinding. Um, I mean, you have these limit breaks that don't even level up once until you use them like 1300 times, something like that. Like, any other RPG that I played, when you're trying to level something from level 1 to level 2, it's supposed to be a little easier, right? Like, it's supposed to be pretty quick, and then as it goes higher in level, it takes longer and longer and longer, that's fine. But how many of you have actually leveled up your limit breaks in this game? You know, and maybe for a 3-star unit it's easier, but... It's just cr crazy how they calculated these things, and then later, I think they kind of make up for it by having... Um, certain materials or items actually help you level those things, actually help you level trust masteries, and that's great. But it's like, why did they make it so incredibly grindy in the first place? Like, I don't get it. Now, I, I'm, I love this game. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to, like, pretend to be on some moral high ground and walk away from a game that I actually enjoy playing. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do, however, is be really careful with any with my wallet. Um, I'm never, ever... <laughs> gonna pull again like first thing in the morning or whatever like it used to be where you know I can't wait for a banner to drop you know as soon as I wake up is maintenance over all right let me do my pulls and then you know record it or be excited to see what I got now what I'm gonna do because of the way that they can be tricky like this is now I'm gonna go on reddit I'm gonna look at the um, the post or thread or whatever that kind of surveys everybody who's pulled and they kind of accumulate, um, I, I can't think, aggregate the rates that every uh, unit is being pulled. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to see, okay, is are the rates fair? Is this actually being pulled? I mean, God forbid there's actually a, another glitch or bug where something is not being pulled at all, like a 0%. I'm going to check that first. If I had checked Zidane on, on something like that and saw that he was only a 2% pull rate honestly I wouldn't have gone for it at all he was not worth 30 tickets that I spent trying to get one of them and even with two Zidans that I have on my main account it's still gonna be hard to farm uh, trust mastery I would have I would have just tried to deal with one I mean that would suck but it's not worth 30 tickets for me even if you can argue oh well three point whatever percent is better than the two I don't care it still wouldn't have been worth it for me so do what you will with your tickets and your money, of course. You know, everybody's free to do what they want. I hate it when people on YouTube get mad when somebody uses their money, you know, calls them pay to win in a derogatory sense or something like that. Like, do what you want. It's your game. It's your life. It's your money. You're free to do what you want. That's totally fine. But I'm just saying, for me, it's like, I'm going to check if the rates are worth it, if it seems fair, if it's not, if in my calculation, if it's if my money or my tickets are spent better elsewhere, then I'm going to do it. I can no longer trust that, you know, things are going to drop the way that I want them to drop. And, and that's fine in some sense, but that just means that, you know, I have to take this extra step to be cautious. Now, a bit of honesty here. I did think that it was a little too easy in the past to pull really good units. Like Lena is the best healer in the game right now. Healer and support, she has... Kiraja and Cheer. That's a really, really good unit there. And she was super easy to pull. Like 12%, you know, pull rate. 
And unlike other games where you have to, you know, constantly, constantly um, upgrade stuff, if you pull a pretty future-proof unit, not Lena per se, but let's say you pulled Warrior of Light, you pulled Cecil or, you know, something like that, you don't have to keep worrying about upgrading in the future so much. I mean, you're future-proofed at least for six months or a year. You know, so I, I kind of like that, but... Um, yeah, my, my sense was, wow, this game is really fair. They make it really fair for free-to-play players. They can pull these great units at 12% pull rates. That's, that's really awesome. Now it's like, okay, now... Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, sorry, I got cut off. I actually got a phone call. But um, yeah, as I was saying, um, in the past, I will admit that you know certain units were easy to get. And that seemed fine, but in, in the back of my mind, I was also thinking, well, they're, they're great now, maybe they're not so future-proof in the future. You know, like, you're gonna get stuff like Lightning. You're gonna get stuff like Orlando, these, um, you know, base five-star units or whatever, and those are gonna be the, the meta in the, you know, not near future, but, you know, six months down the road, sure. So, you know, it all seemed kind of like it made sense and now it's like already things are getting super hard to pull we're not even getting those um, trust mastery banners where they just feature Zidane only because I guess they did that in Japan and they figured out that it was way too easy to get overpowered that way and that's fine but you know don't make the cha change so drastic that the that global audience feels like they're getting screwed over a lot of times in these games everybody's always complaining about how much better the Japan version is because over there they're worried about the competition they're trying to like appeal to as many people as they can here for some reason they assume that everybody wants to spend their money or grind away I mean even for this event you're getting less rank points than what was offered in Japan and so forth I don't know why they keep doing that but anyway uh, just I apologize if I'm coming off too negative but I, it just concerns me that a game I love could, you know, is kind of starting down the wrong path. I'm hoping that people were vocal enough, maybe on their Facebook page or whatever, that they'll, you know, take pause and you know reconsider their strategy because people are not dumb. They have the internet. Everybody knows the information spreads like wildfire now. They can't get away with stuff. So I'm hoping that they'll listen to their audience and not just have a plan like oh well you know we made the money we need to make let's just let the game die like I really don't want that to happen this game is um, a lot of fun for me you know there's a growing community and people are great there's you know other YouTube channels that are just awesome I I, I think that this game has a lot of potential so I just don't want to see it ruined um, by a company that has a past of being greedy has a past of upsetting their customers so anyway um, yeah, I apologize if this came out really ranty, and I'm sure there are going to be people who don't like it. But um, just wanted to kind of uh, clarify things, and also, you know, just if, if, if it kind of makes sense to you, maybe take my advice of holding off on pulling in future banners until you see that it's um, fair or what you expect. So um, I hope that, you know, some of this stuff made sense. I hope it didn't seem like some overly ranty person because, you know, I don't expect anything to be perfect, but I just have seen this cycle happen way too many times in mobile gacha games, um, and it's just it's just way too early, you know, for for something like this to um, kind of set the course for uh, for a title that I love already. So, anyway, um, that's that's my spiel. I'm gonna stop now because I'm just rambling now.